Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. First of all, I am sorry it's been so long I've checked in on the channel. I think it's been like two months or three months since I've posted. Little update, first of all, if you don't care about my life update and you're just here for the tutorial, skip to the timestamp wherever I put it. Yeah, my life has been crazy. Work's been going insane. Uh, things kicked back off with Corona sort of dying down a little bit over here for a minute. Um, I was working on some huge projects. I was up in the river country. It's a beautiful part of the world shooting one of the biggest projects that I've ever shot. And unfortunately for me, I did need to focus on my business and growing that because one of my goals is to get some employees this year. And unfortunately, uh, YouTube doesn't tie into that too much. YouTube's just a passion of mine. I love teaching you guys what I know and learning a few things. Through that process, it sort of led me to where we are today and what we're talking about today. And you've clicked on this video because you want to know how to speed up your workflow in DaVinci Resolve. For me, these little tips and tricks have helped me a lot over the years. So I thought I'd pass them on to you guys, help up your workflow, because for me, the quicker that you can edit, the more that you can pump out videos, you know, the more videos and more jobs you can take a year, more efficiency, more money. These are all good things. Um, as much as we try and say money doesn't really matter and we're doing it for what we, you know, because we love this career. Um, and I do, I'm very passionate about it, but eventually reality does step in at some point and be like, you still gotta pay your rent, you still gotta, you know, buy food. Um, support the people that you care about if you're in one of those situations. So, you know, a little bit of efficiency for me goes a long way. I really love the feeling of smashing out work and being efficient. Um, inefficiency does kind of grind me. So these are little things that have really made a huge difference for me. There's two things in here that I think are really, really important. And these are probably the two top things out of the things that we're going to talk about today. When I observe myself doing a lot of editing, editing lots of videos back to back, I sort of see that there's a lot of things that come up that I do consistently. That's where that first thing that I find is really important comes in. Keep on to the things that you use quite regularly into your mouse or into your keyboard, whatever your setup is and however it works for you. Use those shortcuts so you can save yourself that time when you are editing. Now for me, I use speed ramping a lot. I love speed rampings. I think they're really cool transitions, especially when you're flying a drone around. I do a lot of construction work, so I use those speed ramps a lot. For me, I found the DaVinci Resolve speed ramping sort of workflow not very intuitive coming from Premiere Pro when I did make that move. So I made the shortcuts on my bar. Rather than right clicking the clip, I've got that set on my mouse so that I can just click the buttons really quickly and save myself that 10, 15 seconds. While it is only 10, 15 seconds, when you're doing it multiple times in an edit, and then you're doing it multiple times over several edits, all these little things add up, it makes a huge difference. The second one for you is power bins. Power bins are something I absolutely love in DaVinci Resolve. It's something I only stumbled upon quite recently, but I found they've made a massive difference for my workflow. Power bins are basically bins that are shared across all your projects. So it doesn't matter if it's a new project or an existing project, these bins will be there no matter what. You can put things like sound effects and graphics, intros to YouTube, intros to the series you're doing. So. If you've got a regular client and they use the same intro, intro on all their videos or you know logos for a specific client, you can put them in there and then you don't have to go searching through your computer to find them every single time you need to use that and drag them and drop them in. Or at the start of every new project, you don't have to drag it into the project file, it's just gonna be there ready for use. If someone like me and you're doing YouTube or you've got a client that's been long standing and you've been with them a while, you've got that regular work coming in and again, it makes a massive difference to your workflow and helps you set things up so it's nice and smooth and you just really get immersed and get that workflow going in your edits. Again, it's something that's probably not gonna save you that much time, it might be 30 seconds a minute on every clip, but that being said, think about how many videos you smash out every single year, 30 seconds to a minute. It's gonna be a lot of work and a lot of time. And for me, it's more about being immersed in the program and making sure I'm not drifting off, not seeing something more interesting, you know, having to go through another file and, you know, seeing a game logo. That's something for me. You know, I get distracted easily. So the more I can just be in DaVinci Resolve, the better. Another thing we can look at, guys, is macros in Fusion. If you're someone that does a lot of animation and a lot of building out custom titles or custom graphics animations for clients, and macros is a way where you can build a node tree in Fusion and then drag and drop it back into Fusion later on with certain elements that are customized. So make sure you're setting up your macros. Now, guys, if you are interested in how to build out a macro, check out this clip here. It is really going to save you a lot of time for you in your edits. If you are in Fusion a lot, it makes a big, big difference. I know for me, I do a lot of title animations. So I built out a glitch animation in that video that I just told you to look at. Um, so if you are interested in that or how to build out a glitch animation title in Fusion, check out these two videos. Last one, guys, and this is probably a little bit straightforward and probably something that Maybe I'm just an idiot and I'm just the only one not doing this and it's something that I don't do too often, but that is utilizing the cut tab. When I am editing and I've got a lot of little clips, so if I'm doing a promotional video, I find there's a lot of clips where this the first few seconds aren't that good. It's me setting up the shot, I press record, there's a bit of shaky footage, all that crap. Once I'm using the cut tab, I can cut that out right away. So when I am coming into the edit tab, I know that every single clip in the edit tab when I've moved into there is just good quality content. It really helps me with my workflow if I'm really trying to smash it out and I just know exactly what I want to edit, how I want to edit it, and I've got that plan in place. I drag those clips into the cut tab, 
slice them up, move over to the edit tab and then start moving through that. It makes it way, way quicker. And that's it guys, that's how you increase your efficiency. So I do apologize in me not posting as much as I have in the past. I'm trying to be more consistent with YouTube. It was one of my 2021 goals, but you know, we'll kick off in June, why not? So I am trying to do more and more with YouTube as the days go by. I plan for actually shooting these videos and making sure I'm doing them properly. Um, for me, I did hit a, hit a bit of a roadblock on like what sort of content do I wanna post. I wanna make sure it provides value for you guys and share my sort of experiences as a so like an intermediate level business owner and filmmaker with this sort of industry. I'm not by no means a rookie, but I wouldn't say I'm up there with some of the pros, but hopefully it's interesting for you guys to follow along with that journey. But if you did take anything away from this video, guys, I would love it if you could check me a subscribe, hit us a like, because YouTube loves that stuff. It lets other people know that you like it and hopefully they can get something from it too. But that's it for me, guys. I really hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. And I'll catch you in the next one.